uh, the request for the Joint Strike Fighter Program and it, to review its cost, schedule, performance, given that it is the largest acquisition program in the history of our nation. To provide some context, since its inception, the Department has invested $44 billion to develop these aircraft. For fiscal year, uh, year 2014 alone, the President's budget request for the Joint Strike Fighter Program includes $8.7 billion to continue development of, test, procure 29 aircraft, operate and sustain the growing fleet, and begin a formal modification program. For today's hearing, there will be two panels. The first panel I will welcome under Secretary of Defense for Acquisition, Technology and Logistics, the Honorable Frank Kendall. Thank you for coming. Chief of Naval Operations, Admiral Jonathan Greenert. Admiral, thank you for being here. Chief of Staff of the Air Force, General Mark Welsh. General, thank you. Assistant Commandant of the Marine Corps, General John Paxton. General, thank you. Program Executive Officer for the Joint Strike Fighter Program, Lieutenant General Christopher Bogdan. Thank you. On the second panel, we're going to hear from the Director of Operational Test and Evaluation, the Honorable Michael Gilmore, Director, Government Accountability Office, Acquisition and Sourcing Management Team, Michael Sullivan, and Senior Fellow and Director of Research, Brookings Foreign Policy Program, Michael O'Hanlon. Gentlemen, thank you for being here and providing your testimony. I've been concerned about the defense acquisition programs that obviously cost taxpayers billions of dollars more than what the Department and Congress originally signed up for. The Joint Strike Fighter Program has had more than its share of problems over the last decade. Frankly, its history reads like a textbook on how not to run a major acquisition effort. For instance, the government turned over complete oversight responsibility to the prime contractor on a cost reimbursement contract, resulting in questionable design decisions, some cost overruns, and scheduled delays. And the extreme overlap between development and production, also known as concurrency, guaranteed the unit cost of the aircraft would be considerably higher than the $69 million per copy we originally planned. That said, after many challenging years of development, I'm told that the program is starting to turn the corner in terms of cost and schedule. The most recent selected acquisition report shows the aircraft unit cost decreasing slightly by 4.2 percent. Moreover, projected concurrency costs to modify production aircraft have decreased by 47 percent, and durability testing is showing the aircraft structure is reacting within normal limits. Now, I look forward to hearing uh, testimony addressing these achievements later today, as well as a better understanding of how we reach this point in the acquisition process. I want to hear what steps are being taken to ensure that we learn from this experience and not repeat mistakes. Given the difficult budget challenges facing our nation, this hearing must also address the remaining development risks, the entire cost of the program, the relevance to the future war fight, and whether any other options are being considered for a less costly future mix of tactical fighter aircraft. 